Here's another example uh, that we have seen in the last lecture in which we applied the weak law of large numbers and Chebyshev's inequality uh, where we, we obtained a, a, a limit uh, in this form. Uh, the problem is we would like to estimate the probability of an event and we would like that estimate to be within 0 0.01 of the true value with a probability of 95%. And we had modeled this with, uh, with the Bernoulli uh, sequence and the, the probability was, well, the estimate of the probability was uh, modeled with this, the average of uh, the sample mean of this uh, Bernoulli outcomes. And this was one key observation, P times one minus P is always below one over four. We will still use this. And as I said, this was the result we had obtained. You need uh, at least 50,000 um, uh, trials, repetitions for, for this uh, experiment. Now we will apply the central limit theorem to this problem. Again, the definition is going to be the same, okay, the estimate of this probability. But now, since this is a sum, uh, in fact, it, it has a lot of uh, terms in it. So we will assume n is a large number, which is realistic. Therefore, uh, it, it makes a lot of sense to model or approximate this as a Gaussian. And we know that its mean is p, okay? And its variance is p times one minus p divided by n, because the variance of x size here is p times one minus p, and we have n of them, iid, add them up, the variance becomes n times p times one minus p, but then you have also one over n, which, uh, which is multiplied uh, uh, with the variance with its square, so you have n times p times one minus p, divided by n squared, which gives you this variance, okay? Now that we have this, um, we can write this probability, the probability or, or the difference between the probability estimate and the true probability is uh, bounded by 0 0.01 in absolute value. We would like this probability to exceed 0 0.95. So we can write this event as uh, in this form which means I'm standardizing this probability estimate by subtracting its mean from it and dividing it by its uh, standard deviation. And here you see I have uh, some, some negative value and its positive value here. And the random variable is the standardized random variable is squeezed in between them. So this is, if you have a standard bell curve, this is something like um, this event here. So how am I going to write the, this probability? It's in fact uh, the the complement of these regions, right? And due to the symmetry, these regions have the same area, the same probability. And one of these regions can be expressed as the Q function evaluated at this point, obviously, which is in fact this value. So I'm, I'm subtracting one minus two times the Q function evaluated at this point to obtain this probability, okay? And the good thing about the Q function is it's one-to-one, -one, okay? So it's invertible, I have its inverse. And of course, I have numerical tools to evaluate it. Uh, in, in old days, we had these tables and nowadays we, we have Q function implemented in, in many computational tools. So uh, the inequality here, this here, 0 0.95 is less than or equal to this value here. So I have uh, this here, this inequality. And therefore, if I uh, invert the Q function, okay, and it's a decreasing function, so the, the inequality changes direction, and this is obtained. And when you arrange the terms and solve for n, you get the lower limit as 9,604, which is much practical as opposed to, you see this, 50,000. Okay, so we have reduced the required number of repetitions to 20% from 50,000 to a little bit over 9,000. Okay, so as you see, the central limit theorem is also useful in such cases. 
uh, in which it, it gives us a, a much more practical bound as compared to the Chebyshev inequality. And uh, another example uh, is the Gaussian approximation for binomial probabilities. So we also have seen Gaussian approximation for Poisson probabilities. Again here, now we have the Gaussian approximation for binomial probabilities. And this is also similar to what we have done here, in fact, because here you see this estimate is um, quite similar to a binomial distribution. If you do not have this one over n here, this would be a binomial distribution, right? Because you have a n IID Bernoulli trials summed up. So that's by definition a binomial distribution. So therefore, from that point, we can move on to the Gaussian approximation for binomial probabilities. And of course, if you define uh, the sum of IID Bernoulli random variables as S, that is by definition distributed with a binomial distribution with parameter N and P. Obviously, when N is large, um, well, two observations here. One, the computation of probabilities becomes tedious or difficult or numerically problematic, let's say, due to factorial terms or uh, small exponential term and large uh, power terms. But the second observation is that at the same time, since n is large, I can use a Gaussian approximation here, right? And we know that the mean of the binomial is n times p and the variance is n times p times 1 minus p. Therefore, for large n, if you standardize this, subtract the mean, divide by standard deviation, what you get is a, a standard Gaussian, okay? So to obtain the probability of this binomial distribution being equal to k, you should just evaluate the, the Gaussian in this region. If you remember, I had said that if this is k, the Gaussian curve will approximate this in the region from k minus one half up to k plus one half, right? So for uh, the event, let's say probability s equals three, this would be the probability that y, this, this Gaussian here, is in the interval 2.5 to 3.5, okay? Or if, if your event is s equals 20, then its probability will be y in, uh, sorry, 19.5 and 20.5, okay? That is the idea. So here you see how we can do that. Obviously, this is the Gaussian PDF. So integrated from k minus 1 half to k plus 1 half, this is the Gaussian PDF, and that's it. How am I going to do that? Um, we have two alternatives here. One, we can again make use of the Q function, right? Just plug in these values. If, if this is the, the setting here, k minus one half, k plus one half. Okay, so first uh, subtract the Q function at this point. Uh, well, at, at this point from the Q function at this point, right? So which will give you this area. This is the first alternative. Second alternative is in fact, easier, what you do is, well, at the end of the day, you are trying to compute the area here. So rather than using the Q function, what you do is, since you know this interval is of length one, you just compute the function at the midpoint and multiply that with, with, the, uh, with, with the interval length, which is one. So you approximate this area as a rectangle. Okay, that's easier to compute. So that's just the Gaussian PDF evaluated at K. Okay, that's also another good approximation. Here we, will go, we are going to see an example. 